This week we begin, or finish, preparing the plans to gather with family and friends and loved ones to celebrate the idea, the concept of being thankful. Yet for many, this week will be filled with tremendous stress. And the weeks that follow with the many gatherings will be filled with stress as well because it'll be overcome with the desire to just get everything right, have everything turn out just so, have everything turn out as expected, either within their own expectations or understanding the expectations of others. We have in our minds this picture of the ideal Thanksgiving table. And depending on your perspective, it can be anything from a Norman Rockwell picture of a Thanksgiving turkey being put on a table, surrounded by family and friends, to Charlie Brown and Snoopy putting popcorn on a table. For many, Thanksgiving begins a season where they experience repeated rejection. And it's for them an annual season of sadness, and in many cases, depression. There are those who already have begun looking forward to January 1st, 2023, because then the season will be over. But I want to focus on some of the unchangeable, unyielding things that we as Christians have to be thankful for. We should be thankful for our families. We should be thankful for our friends. We should be thankful for the body of Christ, our church family. We should be thankful for the many blessings we have. Even mixed in with the challenges and the difficulties that we all experience, we are a blessed people. But today, of all the things I want to be thankful for and am thankful for, I want to focus on being thankful to God for God. Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Pentecostal people should be saying amen to every phrase in that psalm. I am thankful for my family. But the reality of life and the reality of this past week has taught me they could be gone tomorrow. I am thankful for this country and all the blessings it affords me. But as we have discussed at length, it is changing every day and in many ways not for the better. I am thankful for good and loyal friends. But just as countries can change, people can change. The life we live each and every day can change in a moment. The passing of my dear friend Daniel Vassal yesterday, I was reminded of the verse in James chapter 4, beginning in verse number 13. Come now and who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Verse 14 hits me, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Almost all day yesterday, that last part of verse 14 just kept resonating within me. Life appears for a little time and then vanishes away. So today... I am thankful that God is God. I am so thankful for that. And as much as I love everybody here, I am thankful none of you is God. I am thankful I am not God. 
And believe me, there are people in this world, as much as I try to be kind to everyone, there are people in this world who should also be thankful, I am not God. So I want to go through this psalm because it really expresses, even in the midst of challenging times, what we can always be thankful for because it never changes. One thing we can be thankful for is that we can sing and shout to the Lord. Verses 1 and 2, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. The God that we serve is a God who inspires shouting. He inspires the, not just the verbal expression of all that is within us, but that our lives shout and speak of how wonderful and how amazing he is. The God that we serve inspires singing. Not just for the miracles he performs, not just for the promises that he makes come to pass, not just for the dreams that he fulfills, and not just for the times he heals this mortal body, but he inspires singing just because he's God. Amen. He is the one in our lives. Just coming into his very presence puts a song in our heart. And how many know you come into his presence wherever you are? Every place you go, every place you stand, every place you sit, every place you try and hide, God is there. Amen. And we can be thankful for that. Serving him, following after him brings joy. Now, I've always tried to do my best whenever I had a, a job and the job I have now to do it with joy. But how many know sometimes <laughs> I do it with joy and sometimes I do it for the money, <laughs> just for the paycheck. I, I, I do it because, you know, the current financial institution that holds the lien on my house likes to get paid every month. But I can come into God's presence because he just loves me with all of his heart, with all of his being. That word shout in Hebrew literally means give a blast that can be heard everywhere. Every place I go needs to know not just that I am a Christian, not just that I am proclaiming a witness, not just that I am serving him, but that he brings me joy and he makes me thankful. And it isn't just Christians that this psalm says should be doing this. All the lands, all the lands need to shout. All the lands need to sing of his goodness. When I think of God, just who he is, and that he created me, and that he loves me, that's something to sing about. That's something to rejoice about. So one of the things we can be thankful for is thankful we can sing and shout to the Lord. We can also be thankful for this awesome, unparalleled privilege called prayer. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the, the second part's my main point, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. Do you realize that when you pray, it makes God smile? It brings him joy. When we seek his face, that gives us the opportunity to connect with him on his level. When we come into his presence, we draw closer to him. And when we seek his, his face, we learn more about his heart. That's the privilege of what can happen in prayer. I don't ever, ever want to follow my heart. Anyone ever told you when you're in a challenging situation and don't know where to go, just follow your heart. You have my permission to tell them that is the absolute worst advice anybody can ever give you. Because following your heart then brings up another question. Who is your heart following? And in so many cases in our world, the heart is either following the wrong people or the wrong ideologies or even worse, following its own desires. 
I don't ever want my emotions or the things that seem to impress my sensibilities to guide my steps. I want the beating of God's heart, the leading of his hand to direct my days. And church, that happens in prayer. That happens when we gather together as a church in prayer. That happens when we gather together on the conference line for prayer. That gathers when that happens when you're by yourself in prayer. All of us in this country and any time of year, we need to be thankful. There will be many people who will just have this mindset this week of being thankful because it's the time of year to be thankful. But we know every second we breathe, it's the time of year to be thankful. Verse 3 says, know that the Lord, he is God. We know that in prayer. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We don't just pray to God because we know that he is good. We pray to the God because we know that he is God. And that he made us. We live in a day where everyone wants to try to convince you that they are self-made, self-created. I did not create myself. God created me. You did not create yourself. God created you. He decided He decided when you would be born. He decided the parents you would have. He decided, regardless of what our culture says, what gender you would be. He decided where you would live and how long you would live. God is the one who created us. Not we ourselves. And since he is the creator, he gets to determine things that we have no business even commenting on. I don't get to decide any of these things because we are his people and his sheep. And this is his world and his pasture. Most of you have probably sat in churches for long enough that you understand that the analogy or characterization of God's people being sheep is not a flattering one. Because sheep are dumb. They are just plain dumb. And there are so many references in the Bible to calling us sheep. Now, sheep are cute. So you can say, you're cute. They're nice and cuddly and fluffy and all that stuff. But they're cute and they're cuddly. And they're dumb. And when we compare our extended and advanced and a massive intellect to that of Almighty God, we are dumb. We need Him. This is His world. We need to be thankful to God that we can sing and shout. Thankful to God for the awesome privilege of prayer. Thankful. To God that we can give to him. This time of year is also a time of stress for so many as we enter the Christmas season and we start getting ready to buy many gifts. Have you ever had someone in your life that you just couldn't get a gift for? They either seem to have everything or just you wanted to get the perfect gift, but how do you get a gift for someone who has everything? And yet we are placed by scripture And told repeatedly what we can give to God. Not only has everything, but who made everything. And verse 4 outlines it. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless your name. You want to know what to get God for Christmas this year? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him on Thursday. And you know what? Be thankful unto him on Wednesday and Friday too. We We are in a relationship with Jesus. And he gives each of us so much. And we need to be a people who Give to him as well. Praise and worship. 
of our resources. They are a gift to him. And we give to him with no strings attached. We don't give to God so that we can call in an IOU later. We give of all of our resources. Now, if you've been here for any length of time with me as your pastor, you realize I'm not one who's going to spend a lot of time talking about money and giving. Churches have gotten into so much trouble with that, and I believe the Bible talks about that and will when it's appropriate. But I'm not big on talking about it. So many people don't come to church because they perceive the church is just interested not in them as people, not in their lives, but just in their bank accounts. But giving is not just about the money. It's about understanding that you realize what you have, where it came from. We not just give of our treasures. We give of our time. But Pastor, I only have so many hours in a day, and every single one of them belongs to God. Every one of them. We give of our talents. We even give of him of our thoughts. On the issue of talents, though, you see, part of giving of your talents is that you stop trying to declare to people that you don't have any. So many people say, I have no gifts. God's not giving me any talents. Liar. You're lying. There's nothing special about me. Wrong. There's no special gift or talent in me. Wrong again. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verses, starting at verse number 3. For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as many... So as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ, are individual members to, of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. And just the beginning of verse 6, let us use them. We each have been given something with which to serve the body of Christ. Amen. Well, I don't know what my gift is. We can talk about that, but let's be clear. You have something special to offer the people of God, and it is our gift to God when we use that gift because that's why he gave it to us. God doesn't just give merit badges. He doesn't give us a badge just so that we can say, ooh, look what I got. Denying that we have any gifts, especially from the scripture I just read, is calling God a liar. You are special. God gives to everyone. And you are part of everyone. And the last point of being thankful, and that really, from my perspective, should be an easy one. Being thankful for his faithfulness. Church, has God been faithful to you? For the Lord, verse 5, is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Our God is faithful. His mercy is everlasting. That's a good thing, because my ability to mess up is also everlasting. <laughs> so I'm going to need his mercy tomorrow. And you know what? On Tuesday, I'm probably going to need his mercy. And on Wednesday, it's going to be a time for some more mercy. I need his mercy each and every day. And don't look at me so piously. So do you. And so do the people in your life for which you find it a challenge to be merciful to. Yeah, I figured we'd get quiet on that one. This is one of the reasons that we can say he is good because his mercy is everlasting. God's not going to love you any less if the turkey isn't just right on Thursday or if the stuffing's not just perfect 
or of that pumpkin pie that you made from scratch for the very first time doesn't taste like pumpkin at all. And the advice I heard, my wife and I were talking yesterday, she was relating to me or something she was listening to, that Thanksgiving is not the time to try something for the very first time. <laughs> stick with what you do well. Even if that's making reservations, stick with what you do well. But his mercy is everlasting. And that next part really hits home in this day. His truth endures to all generations. But you don't get it, Pastor. The Bible's just not relevant today. Wrong. His truth is just like his mercy. It endures. It's everlasting. His truth doesn't was, uh, wasn't just truth 2,000 years ago. His truth wasn't just truth a thousand years ago. His truth will be truth a thousand years from now. His truth endures to all generations. His truth about life remains. His truth about what is right and what is wrong remains. His truth about loving your enemies remains. His truth about being in the world but not part of the world remains. God's truth endures to all generations. This world may, may think they've grown beyond the need for God. Lie. Because his truth remains. We can't replace his truth. We can't enhance his truth. We can't improve on his truth. He is God. And the last time I checked, you and I are not. God is the center of the universe. You are not the center of the universe. Okay, <laughs> just want to make sure you're still with me here. You are not the center of the universe. And since you're not the center of the universe, you shouldn't be the center of any universe, including your own. God needs to reign supreme in our hearts and for that, we can be thankful. Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is God. His mercy is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Can somebody praise him in this place? Hallelujah. This world has gone nuts. But God is good. This world is, I was going to say, is going off the deep end. They are off the deep end. But his truth endures. This world is harsh and has no concept of the term kindness and love. But his mercy is everlasting. And since our goal is to be like him, our mercy should at least be more lasting than it normally is. And his truth endures. Stand with me, please. Can I ask the worship team?